He was just elected Charleston County Council member for District 7. And he is currently a Charleston City Council member for West Ashley. In this edition of Quintess Close Ups, I speak exclusively with Bill and Brantley Moody. Let me talk to you about the 52.8% of the vote that you actually received for Charleston County Council District 7. I'm wondering, Bradley, where are you emotionally still to this day? Well, thankful that we won. Um, you know, we worked very hard. And Ruth, Ruth Jordan is a very formidable opponent. She had been on the school board for, for I guess, what, two terms. Mm. Uh, so had a lot, a lot of name recognition. She went to Middleton High School just like I did in West Ashley. So she was very well known. And um, she's, she's an honorable lady, so we were not surprised. We were, uh, we were sweating a little bit, but thankful that it, uh, that it worked out. Dad, what is it like to see your spot, your son, that is, be on Charleston County Council? Well, I am um, very proud, obviously, uh, that he would step up and uh, offer himself and, and then be victorious. So, yeah, you know, we're very proud. That is so good to hear. Let me take you back to last night, because obviously the Charleston County Council decided to reject the West Ashley TIF. Um, obviously, they'll mm -hmm. take it up as an issue on the next agenda right. for Charleston County Council. Talk to me about what do you want them to do next? Well, I, my personal opinion is I think some, some more work maybe could have been done on the front end because I think some of the members on county council were very open to the TIF, but they were not open to such a duration. Mm -hmm. So when, when 25 years was brought to the county, right. um, it, it was not going to pass in 25 years. So maybe some more behind the scenes work had been done prior to uh, to get to that number might have saved us a little bit of time. So. Saying all that, there are two or three members on county council that are just not going to support it. We know that, yeah. uh, but I think we will have six members that will vote for it when it eventually comes back at 20. And Bill, as you know, Mayor Tecklenburg says that the West Ashley TIF would approve drainage, create parks, create bike lanes, and affordable housing, mainly around San Bernard. What else would you like for that to happen in that particular area with TIF? Well, the TIF is just one mechanism to fund that revitalization on on those 155 um, parcels, but the the TIF, even though we won't spend money all over, it the whole West Ashley area will benefit. For example, when we improve Citadel Mall and we improve the drainage around Citadel Mall, yeah. then the Duwap area will benefit from that also. And so, and, and most of that is in the county. I think 60% is in the county, 40% is in the city, but. That will, uh, that will also be improved as a result of the property next to it improving. Mm -hmm. So it'll cause uh, some of that uh, staggered effect all over West Ashton to occur. So we've got, we, we have got to figure out or we've got to improve the whole Sam Rittenberg uh, corridor. We need sidewalks, we need mm -hmm. streetscapes, we need curbs and gutters, we need drainage. I mean, just so it looks like uh, a really a nice uh, avenue through West Ash here. So once we do that, once we improve the, the drainage of all around there, um, then we can provide some affordable housing. We, what we've got to do that maybe it didn't happen downtown, or maybe see some of these other tips like in Mount Pleasant, right. is we need to have, whether you call it attainable housing, affordable, we need to have housing for the people that work in the restaurants, for the teachers, the firemen, the right. police officers, the, the people that work in the hotels, we have to have housing because if we have to bring all those people in, we're just creating more traffic. So part of our redevelopment is to be sure that we try to get that component correct also. Yeah, you want to elaborate on that? No, he got it all. <laughs> yeah, he got it all. I mean, but it, he, he is right. I mean, uh, if you look at, uh, my father's district covers that, that Highway 17 area. Um, I live over near the Northbridge, but I have seven city councilmen that, that touch my district. Mm -hmm. So I agree with him that all of our areas are going to be positively impacted. It's not just you know, District 11 where he serves, right. it's all of County Council District 7. Mm -hmm. Let me turn to Charleston City Council. The headline in the Charleston City paper reads like this on October 27th. Charleston City Council, again, considers reining in Planning Commission's power. Tell me why now, Bill. Um, I don't know that it's reigning in the power of the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission is a uh, an appointed body. Yeah, There's elected. nine unelected, not accountable. They're they're un unelected. They they're appointed by City Council, mm -hmm. and for them to have more authority than the elected officials is not, in my opinion, the correct way. 
to, to do it. They're an advisory board. They're not a dictatorial board or a compulsory board or whatever. And um, so if they have a quorum of, uh, let's say they have five people and they vote three to two to deny something, and then it takes ten members of city council, regardless of how many are there, right. to overturn that, that doesn't seem to be the right way to do things. Mm -hmm. and, and quite frankly, um, in my opinion, uh, as, as the city grows, as we start putting more and more people, say, out in, uh, in uh, the Bees Ferry Road, Shadow Mall, Grand Oaks, as we start putting people on the planning commission that are not all right downtown or maybe real close to downtown, as we start spreading that out, I think it could flip the other way. Mm. Somebody that might say, well, look, I don't really am not that interested in downtown, so it doesn't affect me, so I'll do something. And so if we try to reverse that, we have to have 10 votes. And all they look at is certain things that are required by law, zoning and things like that. They don't have to look at whether or not they're going to be sued. The city has to consider everything. We have to look at the overall decision, not just the zoning, but what's the impact. And so their mission is very limited, and for them to have more authority or more, um, well, authority would be the thing that the elected officials, that, that just doesn't seem right to me. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's, it's not, we're not trying to take any power away from anybody. Quite frankly, again, in my opinion, I think this is just something that's evolved mm -hmm. over the years, and nobody has stopped and looked at it, and all of a sudden we find ourselves, for example, there, when it was set up in, I think, 1937, there was like 16 aldermen. Today we only have 12. So if you had 16 aldermen and you had 60%, that would be 10 people that you had to have. Mm -hmm. So when they dropped it to 12, they just kept the 10 and made it, I mean, we can't find anything in any minutes or anything that say there was an intentional um, plan to do that. I think it just evolved. You know, what's interesting about city council is, is county council the same way, on very few items, does do everyone, do all the council members agree? I think, with the exception of maybe one city councilman, almost all city councilmen agree that the way that is set up is wrong. Mm -hmm. It needs to be changed. Wow. I forgot to ask you this in the beginning. Uh, let me get back to Complete the Penny. Okay. Obviously, that was passed too. Yeah. When you think of Complete the Penny, what sticks out to you? Um, that $800 million of $2.1 billion does not go, of a roads bill does not go to roads. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. Uh, Carta is a, um, the, the thing with Carta that I, it, it's a function that we've got to have and we've got to perfect. We've got to have public transportation. That's, that's a, that's a non-negotiable. But for these, a lot of these initiatives are, in my opinion, are bringing residents from Berkeley County, from Dorchester County, down into Charleston County to work, okay? A great thought, but where are Dorchester and Berkeley County? But, I mean, they ought to be coming to the table to pay money, too. Mm -hmm. And I told you at our last meeting, like $200 million just flat out for, for green space was just a, that in and of itself, to me, was a deal killer. Uh, but the fact that Dorchester and Berkeley are not involved in the, in the transportation of the region bothers me, that all of Charleston County pays that bill. Mm -hmm. uh, that, those two in combination were a death blow for me. But it passed, so we'll, we'll try to figure out how to, how to spend it wisely. And, Bill, what sticks out to you when you think of complete the penny? Well, I, I'm, I am concerned about the commitment to do these various projects. I share some of uh, Bradley's concerns about, I mean, we've got to fund Carter, we've got to get that right. Um, but in the past, when these things have been successful, we've had a very definitive use for those funds. This is a little bit loosey-goosey to me. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, one of the reasons I'm glad that Bradley be down there because I trust him to to keep an eye on that. I said somebody's got to do that. Okay. So uh, you know the, it passed. So let's uh, let's get on yeah. with doing the doing it uh, doing the very best we can. Get the most bang for every buck that we every tax dollar we raise. Let's be sure we use it wisely and um, and and we'll work together. To make and, that and I had mentioned to you also um, in our previous meeting that that. that the most pressing infrastructure need in Charleston, 526, was right. not a part of the half cents or complete complete the penny. Right. Um, that that just infuriated uh, the people of District Seven. Now you got to remember this was a countywide vote. I, I have not looked at. Have you seen any details about where the votes came from? I'd be interested to see where the votes came from because the people of District Seven were were just livid that 526 was not a part of this thing. So it'll be interesting to see where the votes came from. I suspect we. 
I, well, I have my suspicions, but it'd be nice to be confirmed. Yeah. Because, I mean, after that particular vote, is anybody still saying in their mind, hey, 526 is still dead? Well, the, the question the question is, I mean, dead, is it dead today or is it dead tomorrow or is it mm -hmm. dead forever? Mm -hmm. um, at some point, this community is going to have to complete 520, I-526. It's going to have to be completed to James and John's Island and tie it. Our mass transit is going to depend on it. Uh, there's going to be a whole lot of things that are going to be dependent on that. And as the development continues to, to occur on uh, John's Island, it's going to become even more critical that they have another way off of that island and off of James Island. So it's going to be built. The question is when. Mm -hmm. where, where I think I disagree with, with a lot of people that are against 526 is they say it's going to spawn development. I think that ship has passed, okay? Mm -hmm. um, John's Island, and yes, yeah, the people that live on John's Island, development is there, it's coming. Right. Um, so 526 is not going to bring development because it's already there. Um, my mandate from District 7, I tell you, we knocked on doors, and I cannot tell you how many pe times people would open the door and say, are you for 526? I would say, absolutely. They'd say, you got my vote, slam the door. Um, it, it happened it, numerous times. Wow. So that, that's really their number one, um, number one issue they want done, and that's what I'm going to be working very heavily on. Um, I hope we'll see some movement. Um, on this $420 million uh, here in the next maybe quarter or two. Um, the, as we discussed last time, the, the, the feeling is that the county has held it there into the, right. the, the agreement. Uh, the Department of Transportation believes the county has done it as well. Um, and the DOT, uh, the CIV commissioners are starting to come around too. So I think there's a lot of momentum uh, gathering despite what it's, what it's very small uh, minority, uh, but vocal critics say. Yeah, let me pick up a little bit on what Bradley said. when. Because uh, I've had this argument that people say it's going to cause the development. They want to keep Jobs Island rule. Uh, but that, that has nothing to do with 526. And, and my example is, if you look at the state of South Carolina, you have I-26 that runs up from the coast up to Greenville. And you have I-95 that runs across from North Carolina to Georgia. Right there where it crosses is that corner, that lower left-hand quadrant is the town of St. George. That's the, that's, the, that's the county seat of Dorchester County. And that town is going nowhere. And it's got two interstates right there. And the reason it's going anywhere, I mean, it could develop, but it's gotta, have, it's gotta get off of well water and septic tanks. If you have well water and septic tanks, you cannot have subdivisions, you cannot have industry, you cannot have stuff like that. The water and sewer is already on John's Island. And you got the urban growth boundary line, and beyond that, you don't have water and sewer. So that will develop whether you build 526, but that urban growth boundary line inside, it's going to develop. The developers will go out because they got water and the sewer, and they'll build and build and build and build. And so at some point, we're going to have to build that road over there to get those. Just a matter of whether it costs $720 million, which I, I dispute that number. Um, I may be wrong, but I dispute that number, or it's going to cost over a billion dollars in some number of years, so it's going to be built. Well, we also, we also haven't looked at all the other sources of funding for that. I mean, if we get the 420 locked down, mm -hmm. we can go to the federal. And what, we've, what I've been told is that we ask the wrong question, or we ask for the wrong pot of money. Okay. We ask for money from the interstate uh, transportation body or whatever, okay? And, and, and they said, well, we don't have any money because you've got the speed limit at 45 yeah, rather than 55. Yeah, yeah, parkway. So we're, you're a parkway, you're not an interstate, so you don't qualify for, for money from the Fed for that. Well, what we didn't do is didn't go over here and ask for the other pot of money that says, hey, we need $300 million to do our parkway. We never asked that question. We just asked for the interstate, and they told us no because we didn't qualify. That's the problem. If we get this 420, I think we've got federal money out there that we can go get and build that parkway. And so, you know, they, right of ways have been have been acquired. Um, so it, it there's momentum. It, it is by no means dead. And I mentioned to you before the the vocal minority. That's um, you know, and their friends in the in the media that they, they keep saying that you can print it enough and people will think it's the truth, and it's not. Oh wow! I, I was just thinking this too. 
When you put on your thinking hat, who's that ideal person who can articulate what you just mentioned? Um, we got a lot of people yeah. in this community. Well, there's, there's, there's several. There's several folks on on uh, on county council. Um, uh, you know, Ted, Teddy Teddy Pryor has been there. Herb Sass has been right. there. Judge Raw. All three of those guys have been there. Mayor Tinkenberg is committed. Mayor. I mean, we, we, I've been there with him. Yeah. Uh, Leon Stavernakis right. has been there. We got plenty of people that have been at the had their shoulders at the wheel. Yeah. We just got to maybe get together and think it through a little bit. We've been so focused on the sieve, right. fighting to keep that pot, right. because if that goes away, then it really does get hard. And you, you, uh, Sandy Sin is a bulldog about this thing, she so is. she needs to be in there too. Wow. Yeah, so so we just need to we just need to get our muscle together. Yeah. I mean, there's other, Keith Waring, right. there's uh, Marvin Wagner, right. there's a whole bunch of folks on city council mm -hmm. that are there too, so. Well, uh, gentlemen, thank you so much. I really appreciate Thanks this. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it was good to see you. You too. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>